Hey guys, how are you? I'm Becky Stern. I'm the director of wearable electronics at Adafruit. Um, I, every week I make a new wearable project like this hat or these shoes you might have seen. Um, and um, Adafruit is an open source hardware company in New York. We make kits and open source designs for people who want to learn engineering and electronics and art and all this fun stuff. And today I want to talk to you about what is working in wearables. There's a lot that's gone on in the last year. Um, something that's definitely working is, is cosplay. Right? Um, this is crazy nuts and awesome. And, and this is one of the major communities that the open source wearables movement serves. Um, and it's because these people, they don't just want to make um, a, a weather station, or they don't just want to learn programming. In fact, they might not want to learn programming at all. They just want to make, they have this vision for this really cool thing, and they're looking for the tools to make it happen. And open source hardware is definitely those tools. These are um, two videos from Baltimore Comic Con, and then a member of the Adafruit forums posted up this um, Halo 3 energy sword. So um, another thing that's working in wearables that's uh, not necessarily open source are these $130, $150 single purpose, mostly Bluetooth wearables designed to um, be, wear all, be worn all the time. And these are just some of the ones that I've taken apart at Adafruit in some different teardown guides and videos to try to find out who's using what chips. A lot of them use exactly the same accelerometer, which is really interesting. Just very quickly, I'll go through them. The Reebok check light is an impact sensor for football players. The June UV index sensors for, to remind you to put on sunscreen. Uh, the narrative clip life logging camera, I've got one of those on right now, um, takes a picture every 30 seconds, puts it on your smartphone. The Synapse Bone Conducting Headset lets you listen to music uh, without covering your ears. The Ice Dot is an, a crash sensor for extreme sports. The Neko Mimi Brainwave Cat Ears. The NeuroDreamer uh, Lucid Dreaming Sleep Mask. The Whistle Dog Activity Monitor. And then at the bottom, the Fitbit Force and the Shine, two regular athletic activity monitors. And I think we have some work to do in this space. Only one of these is open source. And that would be Mitch Altman's NeuroDreamer. I think if something's connected to our body, we deserve to be able to explore the code, see how our biometric data is being read, stored, shared, especially if it's in the cloud. There, we're also seeing uh, something that's working, is the, that's working in hardware in general is the pre-order crowdfunding, VC funding, pre, the pre-order model, right? Where you, you order it before it's real. These are a few things I think will actually become real. Uh, the Gotenna is a point-to-point -point, uh, radio for your phone if you don't have service. The Mio or Mayo armband is a gesture control device. Ringly is a jewelry notification device. The Nod gesture control ring in the middle and on the right is uh, a gesture controller. And then um, also what's interesting in this space right now is that luxury fashion brands are getting interested in partnering with technology companies to create very high price point luxury devices like the uh, MICA, My Internet Connected Accessory. It's not what it stands for. By Intel, that has like an $1,800 price point. So that gives them a lot of opportunity to explore with material choice and um, margins, and, and also you're seeing here the uh, Diane von Furstenberg eyewear collection for Google Glass. So they're definitely noticing, right? Don't just take my word for it. Here's a chart. Wearables has taken off this year and last. I spoke at the Open Hardware Summit in Boston last year. This graph was just starting to uptick. Um, and I just have open source hardware on here as a reference, pretty steady since 2005. But wearables isn't just about open source. Um, as you can see here, everybody notices. There's over 140,000 YouTube results for wearable technology. And I think it's our job as open source hardware to, to bolt on this, the rocketing explosion that is wearable tech. If we don't get in now, what's going to happen? A community that we're serving right now is uh, wearables built by boys and girls and families together. And I, I think that wearables has the opportunity to be a lot more sentimental, a lot closer to our feelings than other open source devices that we make, because they go on the personal real estate of our body and we can uh, make them and give them to others. These uh, volume sensitive earrings were made by a boyfriend for his girlfriend, this digital princess tiara and what is it from, that movie? Um, Hunger Games, Catching Fire um, dress at the bottom was made by a father for his 
daughter. And I think that I know that I grew up with my parents making things with me and for me, and that made me think I could make those things myself later. And so, like, look at this girl with her tiara. What's she going to do when she grows up? She'll be like, oh, ain't no thing. I'm just going to build myself an electronic bodysuit or whatever. So this is a really interesting um, space where open source creates a lot of value because you can use these tools to create community and family and teach your children, build things for and with them. But I want to introduce you to some textile craftspeople. This is Leslie Birch. Um, the craftspeople become instant authorities in the wearable space when they try it and they use open source tools because they have a very high level of skill in craft. Leslie entered the Element 14 in our, and Adafruit uh, Flora contest with her Flora umbrella, and she won, and now she works for us, and she's traveling around the world talking about open source hardware and getting ladies into hacking. Uh, this is Sally Byers, and she she's a, a, likes to make textile quilted art coats. This is her moon lotus jacket, and it has something like 60 color-changing LEDs in it. And she shows up on our web chat show and tell and blows everyone out of the water. She's like, oh yeah, I sewed them with conductive thread, whatever. Nobody has ever put this many sewable LEDs into a jacket that I've seen. So I think that the, the skills, they seamlessly transfer if you have the open source tools and guides and sample code to get you started for this kind of thing. Instant celebrity. This is Gladys Delgado Garced. She enters costume contests with her dog. She makes hats for her and her dog, and now she's winning all of them because she put LEDs on them, and she's having a great time putting open source tech in her, in her doggy and me hats. And I gotta say that me and Gladys have a lot in common. <laughs> this is my Halloween costume. There are some uh, mainstream fashion designers putting wearable tech on the runway this season. Uh, this is the first year I think we've seen any wearable tech in legit New York Fashion Week runway shows. This is Pauline Van Dongen. She's a Dutch designer who last season put uh, solar panels, this modular solar panel dress, so you can charge your phone. Um, and then this season, she's partnered with Philips Lighting to make this flexible light effect jacket. This is Cute Circuit. I heard they're going to be at Maker Faire Rome. That's awesome. A UK pair of designers, Francesca Rosella and, and Ryan Gentz, who uh, make a, an iPhone-controlled animated dress and lapels with flexible LEDs inside them, and they've partnered with Samsung to help sell their smart televisions. Then this is uh, Chromat designer Becca McCarran out of New York City, who on her most recent runway show put some Adafruit electronics in her, in her garment, both of them, cage, cage dress and um, kind of metro, met, uh, metropolis-themed bustier there. And so I think that we used to see, is my GIF going? There we go. Uh, I, we used to see, like, when 3D printed fashion came out, it was, ooh, like, what's it made out of and how is it made? I think we're seeing now a shift towards, well, okay, I, I see that it's made high tech. What does it do? And that's a really interesting flip. So if you think about who is interested in wearable technology, the what does it do crowd is a lot bigger than the how, it is, how is it made crowd. So this is very interesting. This is a feather skirt designed by a Parsons grad student named Bursa Oskin. And um, it raises the feathers when it faces north, I think. It's like supposed to be a bird migration. So you can see it's very subtle. So I think that uh, wearables are going to be more invisible. I think this is pretty invisible tech in terms of it being just about what it does and not, not any flashy LEDs like my hat. And, um, but I think we're also going to see stuff be more fashionable, right? You're seeing these fashion designers incorporate, making it cool to wear LEDs. I think we still have a little bit of ways to go there. Um, but that's where we are. A lot of exciting things have happened in the last year. A lot of more exciting things are going to happen. Um, thank you very much. If you want to learn more about my work, you can check me out here at this URL. I do a weekly live show about wearable electronics on YouTube and make projects every week. I look forward to chatting with you all later. Thank you.